Hello and welcome to another episode of the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I am your host, Matt Belair. Today's guest is the author of four books and brings a refreshing look on how we can use the exploration of consciousness to explore our spiritual identity and enhance our intellectual and physical lives. He is best known for his ability to teach people how to have profound spiritual adventures through the use of out-of-body experiences and altered states of consciousness. Over the decades, he has developed an effective system to experience safe, self-initiated out-of-body adventures. For the past seven years, he has conducted an in-depth six-day workshop titled Out-of-Body Exploration Intensive at the renowned Monroe Institute in Virginia. As a certified hypnotherapist, he incorporates various methods including hypnosis, visualization, meditation, and energy techniques in his workshops to explore the profound nature of out-of-body states of consciousness and the benefits of accelerated personal development. Through lectures, workshops, and his books, the author teaches the preparation and techniques of spiritual exploration. Welcome to the show, William Buhlman. Hi, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. I'm super excited. Very good. I'm ready. Ready to go. Amazing. So, well, okay. So there's a lot we can get into. Um, I know that you're full of practical information. You've been doing this for a very long time. Um, I would love to be able to get that six day intensive in, in one hour, but I don't know if that's possible, but for the, for the people, for the people that are new to your work, do you just want to give them a, a brief background on, on how you got to where you are today and, and the work that you do? Well, um, 40, over 40 years ago, I wouldn't have believed any of this was, uh, was true or real or anything. I was a disbeliever. Uh, and I was in college, and a friend of mine had a spontaneous out-of-body experience. Uh, and he come to me and told me it was a you know, mind-blowing experience. And he got me in, intrigued, and I figured, you know, if he can do it, I should be able to do it. So I found out through some uh, research that there were techniques that you could initiate and train yourself to have these kinds of experiences. So I decided to to do one, which I today teach as a target technique. And I did this technique uh, for 24 days. And to be quite frank, nothing happened for 23 days. And I was losing, um, I figured I'd give it a month. But uh, 23 days in, I was having some lucid dreams, but nothing that I would consider an OBE. And on the 24th day, I had my first um, out of body experience, a very uh, it's in a, now I know it to be an etheric type of experience, very physical like. I put my hand through the wall, and then I stood up and I felt the separation from my body. Uh, it was very, very. Uh, it was a shocking experience, and it opened the door for me, and I became obsessed with it. I became obs obsessed with the concept that oh my god, I we, there's other dimensions and. We can enter these dimensions and explore them. It was like a whole new world opened up, and I changed my entire, changed my paradigm on the, the nature of reality and what I am. And I just began to explore it on a regular basis, and I just never stopped. So here it is, what, 45 years later, something like that. It's been a while. That's incredible. Um, and and your, a lot of your work is is at the Monroe Institute for Consciousness. Is that is that how you yes. start Monroe Institute for? Yeah, yes, it's I'm really... the trainer at the Monroe Institute uh, in Virginia, Faber, Virginia. Beautiful facility, top notch facility. I think it's the best in the world. Uh, it's unique because everybody's in their own check unit, and I communicate with them through speakers. Um, you know, in most workshops you're laying on the floor. And, you know, it's a, it's a, a global, uh, it's a communal type thing. This is a highly individualized exploration of consciousness where everybody has their own high quality uh, uh, headphones in a cloistered environment. Um, and they are, it's, it, it really adds to that ability to go deep. 
Uh, I, I use HemiSync, of course, and uh, sound technologies with induction, all kinds of induction techniques to uh, help us assist people to enter these states of consciousness. That's incredible. And have you done have you done any work with Tom Campbell? He came on the podcast, and uh, he, I know he blew a lot of listeners' minds. I was just curious if you worked with him at all. Well, I know Tom. I've met him. We he also does a program at the Monroe Institute. Um, so um, I do two different programs. I do the OB intensive and Destination Higher Self, which is a preparation for the afterlife tech uh, program. Um, so yeah, I've met Tom, but no, we've never worked together um, on a on a during a workshop or anything like that. So okay. certainly a casual yeah. meetings kind of thing. Well, you said something there that piqued my interest, the afterlife workshop. Um, oh, man, there's <laughs> there have so many questions. Um, okay, well, do you want to just talk about that a little bit? You know, we're, you, some of your books are entitled Higher Self. And for me, I have a lot of, you know, I've touched these spaces a lot, but I don't, you know, I say that some, I've been in the spaces where I've had many lucid dreams i've had out of body experiences but i'm not at the level where i can induce it you know i did i did some astral projection when i was in my teens and you know maybe successful kind of you know a couple of times but i had a very significant one a few times in my life but it wasn't really the conscious you know i'm going to do this and then it happens and for you it's like you live in that environment and so when you live in that environment and you can access it um, then you're getting into things like higher self, life after death, you know, experiencing mm -hmm. these dimensions as a real thing. It's very powerful. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain maybe some some of those lessons of being able to experience that or, or how your beliefs change or or and then get into how sure. to access them? Or there's just so much. I don't know. You you, you tell me where we should start. OK, well, the, I feel that um, the whole topic of OBEs and um, our let's just say our knowledge of the afterlife it's all interconnected because uh when it's the same realities that we're exploring uh, they're non-physical thought responsive environments that we enter either through an obe or during uh near-death experiences for instance during many some shamanic journeys but people forget that when they have what people perceive as these altered states of consciousness they're entering a highly thought responsive environment. And what is often forgotten is that we're not just observers of reality. We are active, energetic participants in a thought responsive realm. So we are always interacting. Our thoughts are constantly creative. Thoughts are creative, but as we leave our bodies and go into higher dimensional realities, the results of our thoughts manifest much quicker. In the physical world, you can be sloppy with your thoughts. Uh, it's, it's a slowed down molecular environment for that reason, where people can be idiots here and think negative things and it won't immediately impact them. But once you leave your body, uh, you're in a whole different, there's a different, the rules of the road have changed. And if you start projecting fear-based thoughts uh, what, or, or any kind of negativity, it's going to manifest in some form. And that's what people just have a hard time, I have found, in the, especially in the last 20 years, because uh, I've been teaching this subject matter for you know, a long time, three decades. And people have a hard time accepting personal responsibility for their own thought projections. It's, uh, it, it's, I don't know why, but it's because it's so clear to me that every thought is a creative process, is a creative, has a potential of manifestation. So this is one of the issues. That's why there's so many fear-based, um, unfortunately, so much fear-based uh, beliefs floating around out there in social media because people are essentially, they're interacting with their own fear-based thought patterns and beliefs. If you believe in demons and devils and you go out of body, the, the, you're, you're setting up a, an environment for nothing but negative. But if you believe in positive, if you believe in 
let's just say in a positive, supportive, loving environment that the universe is loving and that's supporting and we're immortal, powerful beings, then you are a powerful being and you don't encounter that. I haven't. I know there's negative beings. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying that we go to the energy level and experience the reality that resonates with us as individuals because we are being interactive. We are the powerful creators of our reality on every level of the universe, but it's more pronounced and it occurs faster in non-physical realities. But people bring in their old archaic negative beliefs into these thought responsive environments. This happens all the time. It happens in shamanic ceremonies. I've been, I, I've been, I've been to Peru. I've done all kinds of ceremonies and I've witnessed people that have had what people, you know, let's just call them not positive experiences. And it's, it's strictly the fear that they're bringing in with them. And we have to grow up and become aware of the fact, I don't care whether you're using um, DMT to initiate an altered state, deep meditation, OBE techniques, whether it's a spontaneous near death experience, it doesn't matter how you're entering these states. You have to grow up and be aware that you are the creative force and take responsibility for your, every thought is a creative projection. And that is the biggest issue I see out there today that is, that is being encountered. Social media is just saturated with all this negativism about, oh, uh, we're going to get, uh, there's hitchhikers. I've heard it all, you know, I, I have dealt with dealing with it because of teaching this for so long. And uh, th the bottom line is always taking self-responsibility and, and owning your own power, as the shamans would say. You're a powerful, we are, all of us are powerful, creative souls entering a highly thought responsive environment. And, and then you have to take command of that environment. You have to take command of your own projections. And the problem is that a lot of it is subconscious. You know, there's, we're, we're consciously and subconsciously projecting our beliefs and our thoughts around us. So it's, you have to retrain yourself and <laughs> to be effective, to be an effective explorer, you have to be self-empowered and know that you are the creative force. It's very important. Amazing. Amazing. <clears throat> you you wrapped up a lot of deep insight in a in a few minutes. You, the way that I equate that uh, is when I go to Burning Man, and when I've heard I've heard of these states before. And the way that I understand it is that in the third um, dimension, it's it's just more density where what you're talking about happens. So when I project a thought, unconscious thoughts, you know, or conscious thoughts, all the thoughts, it matters and it's going to come back. It's you know that's the law of attraction. But here, it just takes more time until you see it happen. Yes. And I've heard, um, and it makes sense to me, pretty much everything that I've read, that um, when you go to this higher realm or next dimension, fifth dimension, astral state, that you know you can project a thought and that thing will manifest instantly. It has that ability to because there's maybe less resistance or, or different laws that um, govern that space. So for you to basically be initiated to be able to navigate that space, you need to have done enough self work that you're not kind of like a maniac in your own head. And yeah. that's the issue with most people is they haven't yeah. done enough work They, you know, one of the things that I'll tell people, I say, there's a fundamental difference in consciousness. If you can quiet your mind or you cannot, and I would say that there's maybe only a small percentage, five to 10% of the population, I don't know, that has the ability to quiet their mind. Because if you can't quiet your mind, yeah. you have all these thoughts going on. And in that Absolutely. realm that you speak of, as they go, they're going to manifest instantly. They say, William, this thing came out of nowhere. You're like, well, were you thinking about it? And it's like, was that happening? Well, it comes back. So a lot of important points. Oh, so would you say that? No, go ahead. I agree completely. Um, yeah, uh, but it, it goes beyond just thought control. It goes beyond, it's the programming that we have from childhood. We have been programmed with negative belief systems that is part of the, now part of the, not only the collective consciousness. I mean, look at the, just this whole idea of hell. 
And the whole, I was brought up as a Christian, as a child, and eventually I rejected the whole, I rejected the belief system. But the point is that I'm, I was influenced by that. We're all influenced by the collective consciousness we live within. I mean, how much more negative can you get than eternal hell? I can't think of any levels of uh, all burning and uh, burning, being tortured. Oh my God. It's the overlay of consciousness, unfortunately, not only in, I'm not just picking on Christianity, I'm many religions. I, 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 mm. I just want to make that clear. There is so much negativity overlaid, the carrot and the stick, because it's all about control. If you look at it, most religions are centered on some level, it's about control. There's it's a lot of the rules are involved in control. And because you want to, it's all it's instilled in the belief system. We have to grow up and realize that these are man-made things. These these are no reality. You know, what would what I often say is what would you believe today if you would have been born in Afghanistan or China or Iran or Iraq or anywhere else in the uh, other than the Western world, your belief systems would be totally different. And you'd be just as adamant about your beliefs as they are in these other world places in the world. So we have to begin to examine ourselves really seriously. The beginning step to be an effective explorer is to re-examine all of your belief systems, all of your all of these assumptions and beliefs that you've ever held from birth and begin to really examine them, write them down. What supports the beliefs? What would you believe? I, I, lived, for, I lived for four years in China. And I know for a fact, if I would have been born in China, I would not have been a Christian. Uh, my, so the, we have to be aware of this, um, that, that, we are the we are the result of programming childhood programming and our subconscious mind has been influenced by this so you have to begin to purge your your you know they everybody talks about purifying the body purifying the mind is way more important and cleansing the the the, the lens of our mind we must cleanse that and then we can enter in these thought responsive environments and be more effective not be manipulated and uh, scared by every little move around us. And that is so critically important. It's seldom talked about. Everybody's focused on techniques, you know, this magical technique. And that's not the, that's not the starting point at all. Techniques should come later. Once you clean the mind of all of the baloney and negativity and fear-based philosophies that, that are just latched onto us from birth, then you can begin to really start on techniques and energy work and really begin to get the most from it. And, uh, and unfortunately, many people put the cart before the horse. Yeah, yeah, that's such a very important point. Um, you know, everything that I've learned in martial arts or snowboarding or whatever, you have to start with the absolute basics and people, like you said, the carpo for the horse is a, is a perfect analogy. And that there, the piece you're speaking about is if you can't, it's like, if you don't pass go, you don't collect 200. You have to be able to do that first before moving forward. And in my background, I've studied a lot about conditioning, you know, a hypnosis as well, mass persuasion, all these things. And it's such a complicated and very um, intricate system of manipulation, you know, from your family, from the media, from religion, from everything. And, you know, when I fully understood it, or not fully, but really came to accepting that it was really hard because most of what I was taught was, was limiting, almost all of it. All of it was yeah. this limitation it was untrue it came from people that it, all yeah. of my upbringing it, it's kind of a lie and and it, it it takes the wind out of your sails for a second but what it also allows you to do is it uh, allows you to build your own reality from that point and so yes. you know what you're yes. speaking about is absolutely 
One of the most shocking things I learned probably within the first year, I was having a lot of out of body experiences in the seventies. Um, that's when I started 72. And um, it was shocking to me because I awoke into the fact at some point, it didn't take long either, that, oh my God, everything that I have learned up to that point, I was in college studying sociology and philosophy and everything that I had learned was either flawed or a flat out lie. I mean, about the nature of reality, who I am, what I am, what's my purpose, where am I going? All of that, none of, none of nothing that I had been told was accurate or true. And then it's a, it comes as a real shock to your system because you have to, you have to have the courage to let go as even the Buddha talks about being detached. I think that's what he meant. You have to let go of all the programming and that's not easy for people to do. And because you, you end up and the bottom line is psychologically, it's so important to just to, just to let it go and realize that, oh my God, um, you know, I'm immortal. I, you find that out when you have an out-of-body experience. My, I don't need my body to function. I don't need my body to live. That's just the base, that's one of the starting points. And then you realize as you go along that, oh my God, it's like a giant awakening occurs that I have to re-examine everything. It's so important and start as a clean slate. And that's that people have a tough time doing that. I found over uh, in my classes and over the years, decades now, um, everybody, they like to, they like to incorporate and refresh things, but they won't let go of some of the other things. And the ideal approach to the study and the practice and the exploration of consciousness is to just let go of everything and just and then explore it with an open, truly open heart and mind. And that's when the knowledge really floods in. And I think that's so important. Yeah, yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. What comes up for me is just the Zen teaching of the, uh, you know, the Zen master he comes with a question it could be coming to you is like how do i ask or project and as he's as he's the zen master comes and he just like pours in the tea and pours in the tea and it's overflowing and overflowing and you know the student asks what he's doing and he's like you can't yeah i can't give you new knowledge if your cup is full you know if you're with all these programs and that's the whole thing about the unconscious the deeper it goes the the stronger it is and it shapes your reality um, and that's why those those real fundamental ones, it's maybe your energy to point that new information in a way. But if you have these preconceived notions, it's going to be really challenging for you to accept this information, to use this information. Um, and that's that's a huge process. I, I totally agree. Um, I think that, you know, for a lot of the people listening, I think where I'd put them is is you know they're doing the work you know they're they're doing things like meditation they're they're listening to podcasts like this they're they're on the path and even when you're on the path that's why i told you at the beginning of the podcast it was a privilege to have you on because i'm able to recognize people who've been doing the work for a long time and are the real deal and sharing this knowledge so for the seeker they're 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 seeking within themselves or you know i think that these guys are doing the work do you have any um maybe recommendations for either how do they how do they empty their cup do they just do it as a personal process and then once they've begun to empty the cup and maybe they're your intermediate or or exploring these realms like myself where do we begin to start having these experiences so it becomes out of the mind and into a direct experience in a safe manner well um i think number one is to learn um techniques that will work for you. It's about having your own experiences. It's, it's about letting go of all of the philosophies, I think, number one, that's a good starting point. And then begin to develop your own, for instance, many people today are finding energy work to be an effective approach. They have to begin to work on getting their energy, their vibrational bodies in tune. Because it's this is, 
I feel it's all about having your own personal experiences and not being no longer being dependent on what other people say or books. None of that matters. I'm probably the only writer that will say you don't need the books. What you need is your own method to find your own experiences so you can have these experiences firsthand because no one can truly give it to you through a book. It, it has to be obtained. But there's certain things you can learn, techniques to, in other words, increase your vibrational state, begin to work on your energy centers, make sure your energy centers are flowing, that you're, that those type of things are one step. And then being open to having your own profound experiences. What I, I, have, te what I have taught for many, for, wow, two, over two decades now is Many people talk about OBEs as just a way in themselves. I don't, I don't look at it that way. I think an, the out-of-body experience in and of itself can be profound, but it's what we do with it and how, where we take it is what's really the difference. I strongly and I emphasize the fact that when we have an out-of-body experience, we should stabilize our energy field, move away from our bodies, number one, stabilize our energy field with awareness now or stability now, whatever you're comfortable with, and then demand to experience higher aspects of yourself. I use the term higher self now. And that's how you really get to be in touch with, instead of going laterally into the astral plane, which most people do, you could spend a thousand years exploring the astral plane and see a fraction of it, experience a fraction of it. It's vast, beyond anything we, our mind can conceive of. And instead, heck with that, begin to go beyond it as soon as possible. Uh, for instance, one approach is next level now. In other words, get beyond the form-based realities as soon as you can. Make it a goal. Instead of having a goal of, I want to, uh, some people want to see their bodies, which is silly. That's not even a good goal because you'll probably just pop right back into your body. So that's a terrible goal, but that's many people, that's a goal. Um, instead, make it a, make it, make your goals higher, higher self now, make it a demand. I mean, make it a chant and then see what happens. Now, it's, or next level now, go to that next energy level within yourself because we're multidimensional beings. The key is to begin to explore. Instead of exploring laterally, as most people do, they're walking through walls, they're flying. All that's exciting at first, but you'll find after a, a while it gets boring. And, and people, people continue to do the same things. Heck with any of that. Don't think that way at all. Go inward. You don't have to move. We can explore the entire universe and never move because we are a microcosm of the entire universe. We can just move inwardly within ourselves and explore the entire continuum. Every level of reality we are part of already. We are the doorway. There's no need really to even exteriorize to do this. Um, my point is, that's where the profound, that's where the keys are. Go to higher self now, next level now. Um, in other words, move inward within yourself. Focus more on that kind of exploration than the outer exploration that most people write about. And I write about this. My first book is, I wrote uh, 21 years ago. It was published 21 years ago. I wrote it 25 years ago. Ventures Beyond the Body. And I, I did a lot of that, but you know, I was in my 20s. And I learned slowly because I didn't have a mentor. I didn't, there wasn't, I didn't have a teacher per se in the physical. And I it took me a while to baby steps, baby steps. Now we know the inner journey is all that's important. And, and if once we focus on that, we can obtain the answers profound answers and have profound experiences. And that's, that's the key, I think, to the entire exploration of consciousness, is to go beyond the astral, go beyond the mental plane, 
go to our true self and experience the awesomeness of what we really are, which is beyond form. One of the things I learned even in the 70s that I found, and it's shocking when you find this out, that we're not even human. This whole construct is just a temporary vehicle of consciousness. We're, we're not, we're just using the human form for a temporary period of time. When you go inward, your arms and legs dissolve and you become at first like a globe of consciousness uh, with 360 degree vision. And then eventually even the globe dissolves and you become a point of consciousness. That's who we are without form, with unlimited capabilities. Form creates limits. And it's used mostly just for communication. And instead of, it's not who we are at all. So we have to rethink this whole concept of self and what we are and how we progress. It's an inner journey is what's important. And it's exciting. It's incredibly exciting. Much more exciting than walking through a wall or flying. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, you said a lot there. And I 100% agree with with all of that. It's really fascinating. Um, you know, just the broad concept, when you are talking about the inner journey, I think that, you know, we're just conditioned to look for materialism and, and external for happiness. And this that that yeah. mindset, it happens again in the astral realm. It's like, oh, yay, you know, what can I take from the astral realm? What can I experience and yeah. enjoy and look for that thing, rather than flip it and say like who am i what's going on higher self you know how much can i learn and grow and, and get to the real meat and potatoes of who and what we are so i think that is a really powerful and important point and the other thing i was going to add on to and i should figure this out because i just went through the uh, resonance science foundation but nasim haramine his physics basically just proved and it's something along these lines we'll have to double check it but like the mass of a single cell proton is the uh, is the it's same as the entire universe. So essentially saying that one single proton, you know, the smallest thing has the same mass as everything, you know, it flips like we are a, a hollow fractal. So when you look at a, a hologram, each individual square contains the information of the whole. And so I think that's kind of what you're speaking on when, you know, we can explore the universe because we have the entire universe within us. And so yeah. physics and Nassim Haramine are proving that he was on, um, oh, I think sure. it was uh, two two podcasts ago. So you know, I think that people are finding these universal truths in this in in the same way. And you're really touching on what the most important aspects are, right? If you're listening to this and you want to go out of body, why do you want to go out of body? Is it to discover oh. yourself more? Is it to you know? And getting to those really important concepts, like you can't pass go and collect two hundred until you figure that out. Um, but if they if they have passed go and, 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 you know, for myself included, you know, I would love to be able to, um, you know, do a few practices that, that would have begin exploring this. So in my personal journey, I was, I wrote a, a book for the fans cause I get a lot, um, of questions about lucid dreaming and I can lucid dream, but it takes me effort. So I was like, okay, let me make sure I can do it first. Um, then when I do it, I'll write the book. And so it took me a little bit, but I was able to start lucid dreaming again. Um, and I use a pretty, a few simple techniques. So if I wanted to, you know, I do phase one and I sit at home and I analyze all my beliefs and I look really deeply and honestly within myself, maybe it takes me a day or a week and I move through that. Um, then I'm clearing my mind and I'm meditating and I'm, and I'm able to clear my mind. Um, and then I want to see if I can begin to explore these realms because that's the really interesting thing that you spoke about is. I've been in the realms and the game changes. And when I'm in the lucid dream, some of the things I'll say is show me what I need to see for my highest growth. You know what I mean? Yeah, take take me good. where, and I, you know, and I, and I, and then stuff happens and it's interesting. And then I'll write it down and, and kind of experience it. But when you get the information from that realm, it's different. And so for me, I would love the ability to be able to access this realm. So the second that I can come down there for the six day intensive, um, I'm going to be on it and I'm going to definitely check out some of the, I know you've put out a lot of materials, um, but for somebody listening, if they want to start to dabble in some practices to maybe, you know, the practices to start to have the experience. And then if there's more information, like you said, and how to get the most of the experience, what is the experience for? And the last mm -hmm. thing that I'll say is my, my mentor 
who wrote the book, The Law of Attraction, Michael Lozier, it's a fantastic book, how to get things, how to create reality, right? But for me, mm -hmm. it was always, what do you want to create and why do you want to create it? And that element for me was so important. And I think that that's what you're touching on as well is like, you know, you might want a million bucks, but what would you do? Is it actually the million dollars or do you prefer to spend more time with your family? Do you want to travel more? Do you want to go to the city? You don't actually need the million. So um, I'll just end that rant and let you take it. Well, it's it's all about the exploration of consciousness and each individual has to find out what works for them. Um, and that's, I think, is you have to really examine yourself and determine that. That's, that's why there isn't a way, there's many different ways to explore consciousness. And um, I, I feel strongly that uh, it takes some, it's just it's, for many people, it begins with trial and error, doing some basic reading, opening up and, um, and seeing what, what, what are you attracted to? What resonates with you? Um, because I'll be honest, uh, OBEs is not for everybody. Uh, it definitely is not. Some people have too many fears to deal with that. They it freaks them out. I can understand that. Um, that's why meditation is still the number one, by far, the number one, let's say, method that's used for the exploration of consciousness and will continue to be is meditation and a lot of different forms of meditation, as we know. You know, there's dozens of different kinds of meditation. So you have to determine what's best for you um and what's working for you um i of course found obes to be exciting i i was i'm a meditator i like to meditate and i sometimes have obes during meditation but they're relatively rare uh because i focused on self-initiating techniques through motion techniques energy mm -hmm. techniques i use self-hypnosis i use a lot of different let's just say approaches that helps me and others to initiate these states. But everybody has to really uh, find what works for them. But the main thing is, don't I feel it's so important to let go of the old, uh, the let go of the old uh, mental uh, blocks that are so prevalent in our society and to just free your mind of all of it and, and just try, be, be an adventurer. Because this is a fun process. People take it too seriously sometimes. I have fun with it. I like and I teach that. Let's have fun with this. I mean, if you're not going to continue it for four decades, if you're not having fun, you just won't. And I find this exciting. I find it fun. It's an adventure beyond anything I can relate. The, the only problem is sometimes you, you, it's beyond what do you compare this to? It's hard to relate these states of consciousness to others when there's nothing to compare it to because it's not form based. Uh, you know, how do you and people can't relate to the concepts that so you have to bring it down to earth a little bit. But, you know, what I always found that sad is that we live seven billion people on the planet. And, you know, in percentage wise, very few humans know where they come from before they were born. They have no idea where they're going at death. They have these concepts, these childish concepts of, of paradise uh, and other terms that mean nothing really. Just that, oh, it's going to be good. And they have no idea what their purpose is really. It's kind of, it's, it's insane, really. It's like you're, everybody's on an 80, 90 year journey on a train and they have no idea what the destination is. That's unacceptable. That's why it's so important to stop what the daily grind and to start to re-examine your life and your priorities because we're all headed to a non-physical reality. No one's getting out of here with their physical body alive. It's that simple. We're all headed to a non-physical reality. This is what always blows my mind. Wouldn't you want to know what the destination is? You're on this magnificent journey through life and people just are totally devoid of curiosity about the, the journeys. Where am I going? That's what I mean about opening up to these questions and then find the technique or techniques that works for you. 
Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, um, again, really important to touch on. And, and I can tell that you're a real teacher in that sense, because um, the stuff that I've been going through lately, e even with my coaching clients and stuff like that is, you know, when you're teaching someone, it's almost guiding, you know, it's, it's helping them remember that they're the master. And one of my favorite yeah. teachers is Krishnamurti. And I often refer to him as like, you know, the spiritual ping pong wall where you ask him a question and then he just, you know, you know, how long should I meditate? He's like, why do you want to meditate? You know, how do I find in spiritual enlightenment? How do you think you should find spiritual enlightenment? You know, he just, just doesn't answer Perfect. you. And, and he's, he, he's, yeah, he's sharing that, you know, you're the master and I think that you're doing the same. Um, and so, well, what I want to kind of either get into either, or was, um, you know, your new book, higher self now, do you have, your favorite practices and tools that have helped you grow or that you teach and, and invite people to explore and see how they work. So some of mine are, you know, a really quick one I say for clarity is like, just do a two day fast, you know, try that out. You know, it's pretty, pretty interesting. But if you want to, if you're struggle with addiction to coffee or alcohol or anything, two days is really like you just do two days and it kind of resets and you're not going to have that same emotional charge for it. Um, lots yeah. of meditation techniques. Um, and then, so yeah, either maybe sharing some of your favorite techniques that people can begin to explore and see what resonates with them, or how can we start to pull in this higher self? So when I wake up and I do my practices, that's part of it. You know, I, I call in my higher self, um, you know, and the best aspects of me to guide me throughout the day to be of the highest service. And that's a process that I like that I've discovered. And it really helps, mm -hmm. helps me set the intention to you know, have a day, but I don't think if I set the intention like you, you know, you, you get to steer the ship with your consciousness as, yeah. as you do in the astral realm, I imagine. So do you have any insights on, on that? Well, I, I, I really like your idea of intention is the driving force of, of all of us. And it's important at the beginning of the day to set your intention. Most people wake up and they never think about it. I, I believe in doing it as you wake up and right before going to sleep. I, I feel it's very in both people forget that sleep is an altered state of consciousness. Dreams are an altered state of consciousness. It's an opportunity for exploration. We're given opportunities all the time, but we blow a, a, we don't acknowledge them. Eight, a third of our life, we're in an altered state that really science is yet to tap and really truly understand. They just know about REM etc. That's the physical things. People were very active at night. I was amazed during my out-of-body experiences how active people are and how they're, they're, there's a lot more going on than meets the eye uh, at night than anybody would ever even imagine. Everybody's assuming they're all in their bodies. Many people are, are moving around. They're, they're having experiences. They're going to schools, sleep schools, as it's called. Bob Monroe called it a sleep school, which I thought was a dreaming school. There's levels of schools that people go to while they're asleep. Now, they're not aware of it. I'm not saying they're consciously aware of all this when they awaken, but there is a lot going on. So when you set your intention, I, I will remember more of my experiences as I sleep. Is this a starting point? Being more, becoming, making the intention to be more aware of everything that's happening during sleep can really begin to start to charge. Just something as simple as that. It can initiate an out-of-body experience, for God's sake. But it can initiate more lucid dreams, which are a stepping stone. I, I just put out a, a newsletter a few days ago about how to take a lucid dream and convert it to an OBE. These are all steps of consciousness that we have available to us. So that's a good starting point. That's what I, I really like your uh, approach. And same thing when you wake up, set your intention. What is your intention for the day? And people don't even think of that. Um, and then throughout the day, do that. Remind yourself throughout the day that, for instance, I am open to a profound experience now. Always, I put now. I'm a big believer in affirmations. I think it, it, my first book clearly shows that. I use affirmations to initiate OBEs. 
I use them to initiate lucid dreaming, what I call lucid dreaming conversion. But I always tack now into every affirmation because our subconscious mind does not acknowledge a timeline. So it's so important that I remember my dreams now. I have an OBE now. I Everything is now. And it's important where when you go into any altered state, your last conscious thought is very important because that is the intention often. So I believe in your training. What I've done over the years is, and I teach this, is that you begin to train yourself to begin to hold that last conscious thought. If what is it that you want to achieve during that eight hour period of, of so-called dreaming and sleeping? Because that's not what it is at all. Your, your consciousness is always active. So hold your intention, make it clear, make it concise. Now I have a conscious out-of-body experience and hold that as your last thought. Or now I have a profound lucid dream and hold that as your last conscious thought. Use the tools, easy tools, and it will begin to have, and openings will appear for people. And it's, it, again, it's a good starting step. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I really love those. Um, I think that now is very important. That was an upgrade for me because I've been, you know, it's interesting. I look at some of your techniques and it's the same thing. I've been working with self-hypnosis for a long time. And what I would do is I'd figure out what I wanted in my life. So when I was younger, it was snowboarding in the mountains. And, you know, the affirmation was, you know, I have the ability to snowboard, you know, all day, every day, as much as I'd like. And I didn't say, you know, I need this amount of money to do it or this. I didn't say how it was going to get done. I got to the meat and potatoes, which was I want to snowboard each and every day. And then you can allow the universe and, like you said, realms that you can't even imagine and ways that it can bring you abundance or your desires or whatever you're going for. But it's very important that you get clear on what that oh, is, right? Because that's oh, really going to uh, allow… Absolutely. That's a good way to put it? it. I like that. Be clear on what you want. Focus on what you want. And dot. so many people go around today focusing on what they're afraid of and what they don't want, <laughs> what they're fearful of. And that's that's the that's that's just manifesting everything. Like you have to be so clear and concise on what you want, and then stay focused on it. That's why I titled my 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 newest book "Higher Self Now." It's that simple. Imagine how powerful that can be as your last conscious thought. Every day, every time you wake up, every time you, during the middle of the night, the average person goes through about five REM periods. Uh, many people wake up at least three times a night, sometimes more than that. And every time you awaken in the middle of the night, higher self now, high, make that a mantra, make that a mantra, higher self now, higher self now, higher self now. That's a powerful phrase. And that begins to sink into your subconscious mind eventually through self-hypnosis. I'm a great believer in self-hypnosis. I've been using it for over 40 years. Um, I, matter of fact, I'm a certified hypnotherapist. I used to do past life regressions um, uh, before I even wrote a book on out-of-body experiences. So I, I'm a, I'm a, I really believe strongly in this concept of self hypnosis and it's easy to teach yourself i believe in countdowns with intention you know 10 now i remember my dreams or however nine and begin to program yourself through easy techniques uh, that are available today so it's there's they are simple things that we can do that can impact our state of consciousness in a very profound way but it takes repetition. There's an old saying, it takes 21 days to create a habit. And here's what I've run into in my 30 years of teaching um, OBEs, self-initiated OBEs. People give up too soon. They, they, it's, it's, like, it's that simple. Oh, well, I've had people write to me. I get a lot, my books are in 12 languages, so I get a lot of uh, letters. People write to me, and this is not uncommon. Well, I tried your, your technique for two weeks and nothing happened. So I, I just gave up or whatever. 
My point is two weeks. You know, nobody sits down to meditate for two weeks or three weeks and expects to be Buddha. But yet, when it comes to out-of-body practices, it's amazing how many people, ex they, they expect something mind-blowing to occur in, in less than a month, or they just say, heck with it. it. You have to, it's it's not this, that's not the, you have to look at this as a lifetime project, because our state of consciousness is a lifetime project. The only thing that matters in our entire existence, really, is our state of consciousness, because it's the only thing that we are going to take with us at death. The only thing we're taking with us. That's why it's so important that we work on it now. It's the only valuable thing we possess. All the objects, all the stuff around us is meaningless trash. Totally trash. It's not going with you. It's the only thing, the only gold of diamonds that we possess is our state of consciousness, because that's the only thing we're going to take with us. That's why this work is so important. And I think that becomes, some for some of us, as you get older, that becomes clearer, um, for at least sometimes. Uh, but it, it doesn't matter what the age is it's very clear that that's the case. So we have to invest in, I think, the vast majority of our awareness, of our focus, of our intention needs to be in developing our own state of consciousness and not on this extraneous baloney that's, it's a game uh, that's all occurring. It's constant drama that's always unfolding. You know, it's, 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 it's no place to put your attention. Um, and unfortunately, that, you know, I understand that. That's one of the mass media has been a double edged sword. Uh, it, you know, it provides all this drama and it, you know, it provides some insight, but mostly drama. <laughs> so we have to learn to uh, be very discriminating on what we allow in our minds and where we focus. Yeah, yeah, man. <clears throat> Again, I couldn't, I couldn't agree any more, any, with any more righteous enthusiasm on that. I really loved when you said our state of consciousness is a lifetime process. And to speak on that a little bit, you know, it's like, when we go to the gym, right, you've been out of the, sh you've never gone to the gym in your life, you know, and you read William's book and how to go to the gym and get in shape. Well, there's <laughs> infinite exercises that you could do. You could skip, you could do pull-ups, you could do Pilates, yeah. you could do yoga, you could jog, you could swim. I don't care. Get your butt to the gym. But the idea is that going to the gym should be a lifetime process, not just a, a you know, for two weeks and then you're done and you don't look at it. And in the mental game, same with me when I'm teaching athletes or, you know, uh, whether it's like a businessman and CEO or I'm helping someone with lifestyle creation, it's, it's really wanting to put in the thought that, you know, this is something that you do now permanently. And, and if I can help oh. them get to that state then I feel like I've done my job and I can kind of then guide from that in some of the experiences that I've had, um, you know, to, to help move them forward. But even when you go to the gym for two weeks, you don't see anything, nothing happens. You know, it takes about a month before you actually start moving the weight around or you jog a little bit faster, you get these things and we're so conditioned for these quick fixes. So, yeah, you know, that's true. what you really, yeah, it's wow. a good analogy. It's really the same thing. It's a process that we're dealing with. I think it's important to create your own habit of ex personal exploration. I, I found that to be incredibly important. And it takes some time to do that. It takes some, um, let's just say, dedication. Create your own habit of, you know, we most people spend uh, some i don't know what the average is anymore but a lot of people spend six hours a day in front of the tv i mean i don't know what the average is but i hear great numbers that seem to be off off the chart so i mean imagine just spending dedicate and create a habit of a half an hour a day during your own inner exploration whatever that means to you meditation whatever it is 
but and, and go inward within yourself for a half an hour a day and make that a habit. I think that's an important part of this because that's where the results seem to have it. Same as going to the gym every day. You don't go to the gym once a week. You, you have to go every day or every other day to have results. And same applies. And uh, it takes a little, it takes some dedication, but once you create that habit, then results starts happening. Um, even if it's just simple things. I found that journaling, I have a box of journals I've kept for 40 years. I think I can't throw them away. And it's just, they're, to me, they're valuable. Um, and that's important because when you write down your experience, no matter, it could be like you've entered into a slight vibrational state. It doesn't have to be mind blowing. It could be just a lucid dream where you had a brief contact with a, a, your dead loved one. Write it down because that sends a powerful message to your subconscious mind that this is important to you. And it's so important, you're making a note of it. And that, it's not the, it's not the journaling, it's not the history that's important, it's the reprogramming of our subconscious mind that occurs when you journal. That's the important part of it. And it's very important in out-of-body experiences because it helps, it's, it helps sends that message this is important to me. And the more you journal, the more that you elaborate on it, and you do it on a regular basis, the more you open to even more things happening. So it's a process, again, part of that process. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, I can only confirm that again with, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, this course, it's called G life. Um, it's very interesting with the guy who teaches it. And one of the things he talks about is character development. And what he means by character development is that if you just give somebody the answer for, you know, going out of body or going to the gym or whatever, you kind of take away their own character development of the joy of exploring the gym and having a peek around the joy of exploring their own consciousness. And I think yeah. that you're a fantastic ambassador for saying, hey, this is the root. The root is start to enjoy exploring your own consciousness and you know adapt that as a part of your life in the same way um, it might be um, vegetables. If the whole world didn't have vegetables and you're like, hey, if you eat more vegetables, um, there's a whole bunch of different ones you can choose from, but it's going to upgrade how much energy you have and things like that. But just begin to explore the field and then take it where where you want to go. Um, so for me, I'm kind of wrapping around how I would apply this in some of the things that I that I would do. Um, but I wanted to phrase a question because I, I feel like I I know what you'll say, but um, it'll be more powerful if, if you say it. Um, if somebody just spent, let's say they're going to dedicate three months and let's, let's, I like to give like a long time, let's just say six months, right? Because we're, we're adapting this as a lifestyle process. If somebody just set their intention to have an out of body experience with no knowledge, starting from scratch, not even listening to this podcast, somebody out in the woods or anywhere on the planet. And they said, I would like to explore my own consciousness and have an out of body experience. And they didn't, you know, they're starting from nothing. Do you think that with just that intention and a little bit of practice each day um, that they would be successful? I think there's a good chance if they um, if they were de really dedicated and and let's just say if they were doing a technique um, and with intention, focus intention on a daily basis. Yes. As long as their fear barrier is not too great. As long as they're not immersed in um, total fear of others, you know, from from their childhood on different aspects. Yes, it, yes. I had my first experience in 24 days, and I was a total non-believer. I mean, I, I this was not even on my chart, but I did the technique. It wasn't. I did the target technique, and I did it every night as I was falling asleep. And, 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 but, and it only took 15 minutes. I did it as I was falling asleep as my last thing. So we're not talking about a huge time commitment. I think uh, most people, unless they're totally fear, they have a fear block, let's call it. Uh, yes, they could have an experience uh, very quickly um, or relatively 
quickly if they stuck with it. Uh, that's one of the reasons though I have, uh, I teach the six day class at Monroe is because uh, I, I present a lot of, people get to do a lot of different techniques. Uh, each technique is about 50 minutes. And I explore the, the topic. People respond differently to different techniques. That's what I'm trying to get across here. That it's mm. so important that you become aware of your own way that you fun your energy body functions. For instance, some people respond well to motion techniques. They're very popular today. In other words, one of the oldest ones, probably the oldest technique, is you as you're falling asleep, you imagine you're a bird flying through a valley. It's an old shamanic technique. That's a valid, powerful out-of-body technique. You, that is a motion technique. Or imagining you're um, going down a roller coaster. Or even rocking in a rocking chair. They're all motion techniques. You have to find out what resonates with you, what stimulates your energy body. So that's the important. And one of the advantages of doing, at least learning about different approaches, is that you can narrow down what resonates with you because everyone is so different. Some people visualization, I had my first experience with the target technique, which is a visualization technique. But many people, some people don't find that stimulating enough. You follow it. So that's why I think you have to find out what, what resonates with you um, before, and then, and just reading about it often you'll know. Like you're an active um, athlete. I would bet that motion techniques would be your way to have a, the idea. If I was to suggest a uh, technique for you, I would suggest um, imagine you're skiing, snowboarding down the side of your favorite mountain and turn that into your OBE technique and hold that feeling, which you know so well, as your last conscious thought. Get creative with this. That could be a tremendous OBE technique if you can visualize that well and feel yourself going down those hills, feel that cold air on your face, feel the whole, all bringing in all the senses. In other words, that is, that's how I mean by being creative with this. Uh, and everybody is different in that regard. Awesome. Amazing. Yes. Well, you know, you shared, you shared an immense amount of knowledge. Um, I do have probably, you know, a good 50, 100 more questions for you, but I want to be conscious of your time and, and your energy and effort. So the last thing I'll say is, is two questions and you can you know, feel free to elaborate as much or as little as you'd like. Um, the first one is the practical one is if you could share either maybe summarize the target technique, if people out there want to give it a shot, or maybe your top three techniques if it's easy to do. I don't know if you have to go into depth or whatever, um, but I'm going to definitely start exploring them for myself. So this is also personal. Um, and the second thing is, you know, any last um, thoughts or um, uh, message you want to give to the listeners that are exploring this kind of stuff or what's, what's most important for you to share about the work that you've done and everything that you've experienced? Okay, well, concerning the target technique, um, it's still a very popular technique. Um, I call it the target technique. I don't know what it used to be called um, before that. Uh, but it's, it's simply this. You select three targets or more. Um, I, start, I start people out with three or four physical, real objects in another location away from wherever you're doing your practice. Let's say you're doing your practice in a spare bedroom and um, pick three targets that are in your living room, for instance, or in um, a loved one's living room. Uh, it could be anything, it could be a chair, it could be a picture on the wall, but objects that you can touch and feel. Um, and select three of them and imagine that as you're going deeper and deeper, you imagine that you're walking to each object and you're touching them. You're focusing your attention essentially away from your body continuously. That's the key here as your body drifts off. And that's really the key here. There's nothing magic about it. It's just a simple thing of you are directing your full attention, your consciousness away from your body as your body falls to sleep. And that stimulates what many people call the separation response. 
but it's the target technique is simply that. And you feel the object, you get into it. You, if let's just say one of the targets is a uh, statue, then you feel the statue. You look at it and examine it from different perspectives. You feel yourself present with that statue in that other part of the home or another locale. And you direct your full consciousness away from your body on a continuous manner. That's why people start out with three targets and then they end up with 30, 40 targets. They walk around that entire house, examining the outside of the house, examining it. It could be uh, their pets. It could be anything, but it's real, not imaginary. That's a target technique in a, in a nutshell. Uh, and it's very, very easy to do. And it's fun. If um, a, a, Another technique, I've been teaching motion techniques for many decades now. And I already shared one with you about snowboarding. But uh, during my workshop, I have people doing what's called a vortex, where they imagine they're floating in a pond, a special pond. I slowly walk them down to the pond, and they imagine they're just laying this, this beautiful, liquid, warm energy pond. And then they begin to, and the pond begins to circulate, and they begin to move. Their solar plexus is a center point, and they begin to move their body. And they imagine themselves moving like the prop of a plane beginning to turn slowly. And you use, again, it's a, it's a form of emotion technique with, and you center on your, your solar plexus, which is important for out of body work. Many people have spent too much time focusing on the crown chakra and their third eye. When uh, it's more important, I feel, especially at the beginning, to put some attention in your heart area and in your solar plexus, those energy centers. So that's another approach. Uh, I, but again, I teach, I have my participants do 24 different techniques over the, and each one's about 50 minutes over the course of um, six days. And um, Everybody responds to different things. That's what I found. And it's a process of building, 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 your intention, building. And I also wake up people in the middle of the night during the program, uh, around three o'clock in the morning, and I have them do a technique. So it's pretty intense. It's uh, uh, if I know for me, I'm, I'm pretty much sleep deprived <laughs> during the, by around day four. So uh, but it's that's why it's called an intensive. Uh, there's uh, we really focus on all the elements, separation, um, energy work. We we I hit it from every angle uh, to really cover the topic and the condition, preparation, how to respond to vibrational state, uh, how to get the most out of your experience, which I shared with the higher self technique, the higher self now. So there's a lot that we there's there's a lot to learn how to function in non-physical reality effectively. That's a big subject because all the rules have changed. So you have to you have to learn the new rules of the road. So these things are all important. So um, anyway, that's that's the kind of things that we do can I at the uh, Monroe Institute. Can I squeeze in one more question before I let you go? Sure. So I had the the thought, and I've been speaking about it a lot lately, but in the autobiography, autobiography of a yogi, uh, Yogananda's teacher, when he's meditating and watching his, you know, hermitage, he calls it his little school that there, he comes in as an orb and then materializes. This same thing happens in uh, Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. And again, I think it's it's a real book. It's written by Bear T. Spalding, and he's a scientific researcher, and he's going around with yogis that can do this. And in the book, it, it's like a five page explanation. Every time they do something that's miraculous, they, they always give a huge explanation that seems to make sense. And one of the things they always say is it's that it's scientific. They always say that it's scientific law. That's one thing that they always say. Um, and then they go on. But one of the ways that the masters are doing it, they say it's, it's literally holding your attention in that space and time. And so if you can hold your attention and awareness into another space and time, so when you're suggesting, you know, if I'm at my dad's basement and I want to go to my house uh, on the farm, 
um, then I hold my attention in that space. And one level of mastery with probably you and Tom Campbell is to be able to take your consciousness and be at that space and physically here at one time. And then maybe another level of mastery is to actually be able to bring the physical body there. So when you hear something like that, is that something that you, you see as a possibility with a level of mastery in, in what you've experienced? I, I have never witnessed anyone um, doing that as far as manifesting a new physical body. But I also know that there's nothing that's impossible. So I would be open-minded to the potential of that. I don't see why it's not possible if that's, if that's how I would uh, perceive it. Cool. Um, by the way, when, when we do the, uh, uh, I do a fire ceremony at the Monroe Institute on uh, Wednesday night, typically, and there's orbs everywhere. <laughs> so there's a lot going on uh, in that regard. So. Anyway, Amazing. for those that are interested, my uh, website is astroinfo.org if, uh, if you want more information. There's a lot of free content on the website, including keys to control, which uh, many people have found helpful. It's just a, a point counterpoint on uh, issues that arise during explorations of consciousness. Doesn't, it's not just about OBEs. It applies to all kinds of methods, including uh, uh, plant journeys and shamanic uh, practices, etc. So it's I thought that for those that are interested, that may be of some help. Doesn't you know? Doesn't cost a dime to check it. Check it out and look at mm -hmm. the these keys to control. Amazing, amazing. Well, brother, thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you for coming on and your work and and uh, doing all this stuff. I'm really excited to dive deeper and and uh, hit you up in a month or so to let you know what kind of success, if any, I've had and, and figure out what's going on. But I'd love to have you back on the show anytime. Um, I definitely invite everyone to check out your website. I browse through there. There's a lot of fantastic content. You put in a lot of work for a long time. So I appreciate you sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Anyway, been a All pleasure. Right. Yeah, have Amazing. a good one. You too. See you, everybody.